where is the county and its drug fighting efforts and how has it changed over the last, how is it getting, I'm assuming you think it's getting worse, so how is that coming about and what can be done to stem that? Well, see, I'm a little different on that note. Um, the county, I don't believe, is experiencing a drug problem that is any worse than it's necessarily ever been. The, you know, we, we've heard terms being thrown around the last uh, number of months about uh, the drug problem in this area is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't buy that. I see it. I've worked the local drugs in this county for the last 13 years. It's not an emerging drug problem. It is drug trends. And marijuana and cocaine have flip-flopped the leader of the drug trend for the last 40 to 50 years. In the late 90s, here in Columbia County, we were experiencing the emergence of a new trend. It was methamphetamine and, and meth labs. And then in, in 2000, early 2000s, 2001, 2002, the trend started to change again. You know, it wasn't like meth went away, it wasn't like marijuana went away and cocaine went away, but they're trends. It's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So at that time, we started experiencing uh, club drugs like ecstasy, ketamine, GHB, and those things. And that was the trend, and that was the big push. And then in the, in the mid, uh, I don't know, I'd say 2003, four, somewhere in that ballpark, till, until even currently now, it's been prescription medication. The most recent trend that I see working here in Columbia County um, and working drugs is heroin. And unfortunately, that's the very dangerous, and de not that the rest of them are not dangerous and deadly, but heroin is, is much, much more addictive and I certainly don't condone any of them, but so, so I guess the simple answer is it's more of a trend so a trend meaning that the, the drugs are getting more dangerous or the that there's more awareness of it or, it or there's more efforts to make people aware of it so it seems like it's more or there's more arrests being made like what? Okay, well, heroin, the heroin trend in my opinion is the result of the prescription abuse and diversion trend. Uh, instant, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals in the hands of of adults and kids and, and whatnot, um, dependency results from that. Then you know now then we everyone got tough on prescription medication. That was the trend, and they were getting uh, it was getting harder to to get. Um, doctors were becoming more aware. They were uh, less likely to uh, provide a simple prescription. So now it has turned to heroin. It's the the same. Uh, you know many of the sub pharmaceuticals are heroin related. Um, so that's the street level pharmaceutical. You follow me kind of? I know it's a little wishy-washy, but... The trend is basically on the different kinds of drugs. And the, they tend to, the, the types of, of drugs of preference tends to wax and wane among the users. Yeah. Yes. And... So is there a bigger drug problem now than 10 years ago? And I guess bigger, you can define however you want. I guess is it more for people more likely to be using? Are there more arrests? No. I don't think there's a bigger drug problem now than there was in 2000. I think that it's a new trend. It's a new drug trend is what we're experiencing. And that, the, and that coupled with the fact that I think that the Sheriff's Office isn't as proactive as they've ever been, which is one of the precursors that provides the perception that it's this huge epidemic or emerging problem. It's not, emer it's not an emerging problem. It's been constant. There's been trends. But I think the arrest numbers and the tips that we receive and things of that nature have all been constant. It's management style. It's not, you know, I, I give the sheriff kudos in that area. He, within the last year, he came in and he had a different management style. Nothing wrong with that. Expected. And our priorities change. And, um, drug enforcement wasn't on the top of our priorities. And that's okay if that's what we're going to do. However, when I say I give him kudos, that's where I do give him the kudos. In 2009, I believe he recognized the fact that other crimes are associated to that. And not only those things, but it's a constant struggle and fight with drug investigations. They are there. And it's a matter of trying to control and contain that spread. 
So in a retroactive approach to drugs in general, it continues to spread and, and becomes more prominent. You see it in more areas. Um, it's, uh, it's more easily recognized on the street. Proactively and uh, going after it and doing, you know, being aggressive um, with those investigations, you're not eliminating drugs. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not. However, you're containing it and controlling it, and then again, you don't. It doesn't appear to be such a huge emergence of a problem. So that's why, I guess I, I, I that's what I base a lot of the earlier statements I made. That I don't believe it's something new or emerging. It's been constant. The trend has changed. In addition to what's been doing, what's been done now to uh, try to contain the drug problem, what other things would you see, would like to see done by the sheriff's office? Yeah, the absolutely, without a doubt, the uh, countywide drug program. That's been in existence. Well, it was in existence for years. It was very. We were the very. Task force. Yes, uh, Clinton County Drug Education and Enforcement Task Force. Uh, very aggressive. Um, we, uh, you know, we were able to. I would say in the uh, 2001 till 2006 era, um, that stretch of time, we we could have sustained ourselves. We could have been a full-time unit, self-sustained by asset forfeitures. And you know, there's a couple of you know, geographically, we're we're sitting in a great place. You know, the interstate. Uh, it, it depends on how you look at a great place. I mean, you follow me. Sure. You know, we're you know we're a major pipeline between the Twin Cities and Chicago, and anywhere else west and north, northern Wisconsin. You know, not that you know. So this it's not like you know, drug dealers and and uh, drug mules or whatever get off at Petro and unload their shipments and you know to all the locals but they're passing right through here we certainly could uh, be more aggressive at trying to uh, you know pinpoint them um, investigate them and take their things I mean th that's money going right through our county that we certainly have access to why did the task force stop um, Who's to say, I mean, was is that who, who ran it? Whose decision was it to run it? It was it was overseen by the sheriff's office, whereas it was run by the task force manager, um, which was a member of the sheriff's office. Um, I was a co-leader of that for a number of years, and it was and it was uh, uh, participating were were, law, were municipal law enforcement, um, the district attorney's office, probation and parole, and we had uh, we had monthly meetings and information sharing. And we did great things. And, you know, I think that it became difficult for some agencies who expected, uh, you know, and they, I guess, not to bounce around, but in that era of that uh, mid to late 2000s, you know, there was that projection that, you know, budgets were going to get tight and things like that. So people were starting to strap strap down and plan. Good. And we were still taking in asset forfeiture proceedings. We were getting money from the state, from the Fed, for things we were, we were seizing uh, through the courts. And not all of that money would go, like, to point at, for example. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't go, you wouldn't take in $150,000 for seizing a home, um, on County Highway B, and then and then uh, that 147,000 would go to the Pointe Police Department, and I think that there were expectations that that should have been that way. And we were very, we meaning the sheriff's office, I believe, was very good at, you know, what is it that you need? Mm -hmm. um, do you need money for whatever that might be? And I, I just think that there was a breakdown of of that, and then with the change in management, the change of priorities, that was. Mm -hmm. It, that's it. Just kind of the difficulty of divvying up the seizure assets. The, the well, that was stressful. I mean, it really that would be stressful, and there were there were, I guess, for lack of better terms, hurt feelings by that. Now that didn't cause it. That what didn't mm -hmm. completely cause it, but that that made it difficult for some folks to feel that they had ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, it was more than just that. You know, like the other. Um, I don't know what other example I used there, but that that was one of the big ones. And oh, and then um, our priorities changed, management style changed, and and then also staffing. We had staffing issues as well, and uh, um, 
Detective Heimerl left right at that time, and he had gone to the state. Now we're, we were short, and, and this, just so you have some of the background, the drug unit is, de was, is basically overseen by the detective division, mm -hmm. and all the detectives are assigned to the drug unit mm -hmm. and the canine deputies for the sheriff's mm -hmm. office. Um, though out of five detectives, three might not work sole, solely drug cases, they're still part of that unit, and Correct. they will do that when needed. Um, but like with Heimro leaving mm -hmm. and then promoting someone new, their people weren't ready to step into those roles. And it and it mm -hmm. and, the, and their priorities. And you changed. think those issues those issues could be resolved? Uh, to do you, do you have a sense from the other municipal uh, departments that, that these issues could be could he, could be resolved mm -hmm. easily? Or? I have that sense. Mm -hmm. I don't have that confirmation. Mm -hmm. I I think that. I think that. Again, I, I, I'm using the word I, the two words I think. It's my opinion that agencies have felt enough of the crunch. We all have. Mm -hmm. And in order to get things accomplished more efficiently, you know, the whole more with less, we've all got to work together. Mm -hmm. And it's not about our egos, uh, what department is, is who is where and all that kind of stuff. You've got to work together. The big picture is the, is, is the Columbia, is Columbia County. Mm -hmm. So what... Um if we can be brief here, because I'm sure we all we all need to get going. But what what are people talking to you about when you're out campaigning? What are the issues? Um, drugs, jail, budget, leadership. Those have been the primary things I keep hearing. And and staffing. I'm sorry. What what's an area where Sheriff Richards has excelled? I would, uh, I think the biggest, most noticeable thing that he has been able to accomplish was the turnaround of the drug aspect in 2009. Okay. I, uh, I hate to contradict, but I also believe that he created the problem. I mean, and and I don't mean that so much in, in I don't mean it to sound so much in a negative way, but it was a change of philosophies. It was a change of management style. He believed what he was doing was the right thing to do. When he came so, into office, okay. you feel like some of the things he did helped lead to it, but then he tried to turn it around. Yes, and that, and that's why I use that as the example because mm -hmm. though he created the problem, I believe he recognized that that wasn't the best decision, and really that marks some great responsibility. That that shows that he he really he recognized that as being a shortfall and worked to get that turned around. Created the problem how by clamp by uh, cutting back on drug enforcement or yes okay just yeah, just sure. just a shift of priorities okay and, you know and I'm I'm I didn't like that idea mm -hmm. but I I'm okay with it as a person because I believe in doing the right thing and if you think you're doing the right thing you should you should fight for that. Mm -hmm. And that must have been what he felt was the right thing. And I, I'm happy that he was able to recognize that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So that, I think, has been the best.